What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how I created this 90 megapixel image using this 24 megapixel camera. This technique can be useful for any time that you want to print your work in a large format without losing any of the image quality. This won't replace having a higher megapixel camera, but it will be effective in maintaining the image quality as you increase the size of the picture. For this method to work, we're going to be combining multiple images together. So you want to make sure you're taking a picture of something that is not moving or something is very still because if it has any action or motion going on in the image, this method won't work for that. For the shots you take, you want to make sure you're shooting them handheld and not on the tripod because we need slight differences between the images for this method to work. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that you get whatever it is you're trying to shoot in focus. And once you have whatever it is in focus, you either want to switch to manual focus mode so the focus point doesn't change. Or make sure your camera is not in continuous autofocus mode because you don't want anything changing between focusing uh, through these images. Now once you focus, you want to stay as still as possible. You're still going to be making some movements because that's just natural. But you don't want to add any unnecessary movements. And once your focus point is set, you don't want to move the focus point around by moving your body. So try to stay as still as you possibly can while you're taking the images. Now I like to shoot between 10 and 20 images for this method and the camera that I have shoots in 11 frames per second. So just about a one or two second burst of images will give me that. Some cameras only do about 5 frames per second so you might have to hold the shutter down a little longer to get the 10 to 20 images that I'm looking for. But with this particular camera, it does 11 frames a second so that's about 2 seconds worth of shooting. Now the shot that I got I've already taken of downtown LA and I'm going to go over the entire editing process with how to combine the images and everything so let's go to the computer. First of all let's talk about the composition of this shot. So what I did was when I got to this location I wanted to make sure that I had a safe picture and what I mean by a safe picture is that this is not the image that I actually wanted but the image that I actually wanted required me to do some risky things. So I made sure that I got this shot just in case I had to leave there empty handed. So I got this shot. This is pretty much your view from the location that I was in. So this is pretty much the basic shot. But what I wanted to do was to get these palm trees in the bottom left corner more into the shot, but not blocking the city in the background. In order for me to do that, I had to slide down this mountain and cliff that I'm on to get down to the right angle to get that shot. And I didn't know how well that was going to work, so that's why I took this picture. Now, if we switch to this one, this is the actual image that I wanted to take. And to get into the spot was very, very tricky, and I got very, very dirty trying to get this picture, but I got it. So as you can see, each one of these images is slightly different, and that was the goal of shooting the handheld because you want slight differences in the images for the method that we're about to use to combine them together. I also took a vertical shot that I'm going to turn into a phone wallpaper soon that I haven't edited yet, but you can see the clip that I'm talking about right here. It was a lot of work trying to get this composition. Also another very important thing was time of day. I came the day before to actually see what the sky and everything looked like throughout the evening to make sure that I was there at the right time to get the colors and things that I wanted to be in the shot. You might not be able to tell from the way the shot is right now, but the sun is setting on the right side and it fades away into the blueness of the sky. And if I turn down the exposure and the highlights, you should be able to see that. So you can see the more orange from the sun and it goes into the blue. So to start this process, what you're going to want to do is open about 10 to 20 of these images in Photoshop in a stack. So once you open Photoshop, you're gonna hit File, go to Scripts, hit Load Files into Stack. Here's when you're gonna to wanna to go and select your images. I'm going to select 42 to 52. So this is 10 images just to save time. Hit OK and OK. So now that all the images are open in a single stack, you're gonna to wanna to select all the images and you're going to want to auto align them so that they all match. Because remember, there are slight differences between each one of these pictures, so we're just going to auto align them so they all line up perfectly. To do that, we're going to go to Edit, we're going to hit Auto Align Layers, leave it on Auto, and hit OK. So once that's finished, you want to go through and make sure that none of the images are doing anything crazy. And if you find one that's messing up the shot, all you have to do is delete it. But in this case, everything lined up good and we don't have any problems. Now after that, you're gonna to wanna to go to image, click on image size, make sure the resample is checked and set to nearest neighbor, and you're gonna make sure that the width and height are set to percent. We're gonna increase the percent to 200, 
and hit OK. As you can see, the picture got dramatically bigger. So now what you want to do is select all of the layers, right click, and convert to Smart Object. So now we have one Smart Object, and we're going to go to Layer, we're going to go to Smart Objects, and we're going to go to Stack Mode, and hit Mean, which is going to average all the images in that stack together. Now that it's done, this is basically the final image. Now you're going to have to crop the edges off from where the pictures were aligned, and you can pretty much go about your own normal editing process that you would normally do to any other picture, except that this picture is very, very big. I think this picture alone is 283 megabytes. So that's dramatically bigger than we just started with, and you didn't lose any quality from stretching the image because you used multiple images and pulled them all together to make an image this size. So to show you the benefits of doing this, you can see I've zoomed into the super res photo and you can see how the buildings look, the windows, the noise, everything. You see how it looks. And if I go to the original picture that's straight out of the camera, you can see that there's dramatically more noise and slightly less detail in the image. And it's not really a bad thing because I'm zoomed way in. So it's not like that is that big of a deal. It's shot at ISO 100. So Sometimes people ask me why is my pictures noisy. It was probably because you zoomed in this far to the image and no one really looks at pictures like that. But if you're gonna print this picture to a size that people have no choice but to see the details that big, then you might want to get rid of them. And I would go to the super res picture, you can see that it's much, much cleaner. Virtually no noise at all, really. Even when I zoom in this far, it's very clean. So that is the benefit. So like I said, you really don't need a 90 megapixel image for most things, but for certain size prints, it's something that you might want to do because it's going to be looked at in detail and up close and it's big enough for people to really see all of the details. Now, after I got to this point, basically all I did was start the editing process and this is what I ended up with. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask me for an editing tutorial for this, and honestly, this took me a very long time to get to because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I did like a million things to this image to get it to look like this. So, I couldn't even tell you because I don't know what I did. But if you guys want a tutorial on anything that I did, like placing the letters behind the city or anything like that, then just let me know, and I'd be more than happy to make that video. Now, if you looked at my video on why you should be printing your work, you'll know that looking at the images on your computer screen or on your phone is completely different from looking at it in real life. Now here's the print of the final image printed from Sal Digital in one of their wall decor gallery prints, which means it is printed on acrylic glass with an aluminum backing plate. And the way it's printed, it gives the image a very vibrant look and it gives it an almost 3D appearance because it's printed on the back of acrylic glass. For anyone interested in getting a copy of this print, then I will leave the links to that down below. You can get this image printed. And the only way that I'm printing this image is in this format because I want you to experience the way I shot this picture printed in this particular way. That's how I intended the image to be and I want you to get it in all of its glory. The one that I'm showing you on the screen right now is also the smallest size that I'm going to print the image in as well. So if you want a larger one, that's fine, but I'm not printing it any smaller than this because I feel like that defeats the purpose of the image that I took. Now, if you have a photo that you want to get printed this way, then you can just head over to their website and they make it really easy to get your own prints done. All in all, I hope this video was helpful and you can add this technique to your bag of tricks. And if you're wondering why I'm sitting outside, it's because I'm in California now and I don't have anywhere to actually record videos, so here I am. As always, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys next time.